Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we're going to talk about the Battle of Glendale, located in Henrico County, Virginia, on June 30th, 1862. First, it should be known that this battle is known by several names, including the Battle of White Oak Swamp, Fraser's Farm, Nelson's Farm, Charles City Crossroads, New Market Crossroads, Riddell's Shop, and my absolute favorite name, the Battle of Turkey Bridge. Confederate commander Robert E. Lee wanted to destroy the Union Army if at all possible. To do this, he would throw all of his troops except the division of Theophilus Holmes and Jeb Stuart's cavalry into the fight. This amounted to approximately 45,000 men. It was at this time that Union commander George B. McClellan had boarded his gunship the Galena and was out of contact with his troops during the battle. Hmm, I'm starting to see a pattern here. Due to this lack of overall command, it left the individual units under their own command and with no directions, they are responsible to conduct the defenses according to their own ideas. The Confederate attack was hampered by ill luck. While Confederate General John B. Magruder and his three divisions moved forward to attack, they ended up not being supported by General Longstreet and his men due to last-minute obstruction in Longstreet's way. In addition, Magruder lost contact with Confederate Major General Benjamin Huger's 9,000 men. Huger and his men were slowed by trees that had been felled across the road by the Union Army, and instead of finding a route around, spent most of the day in what was called the Battle of the Axes, as they cut their way through miles of road. This resulted in them only attacking with a moderate artillery fire instead of a full Confederate infantry assault. Overall, this resulted in Lee having 13,000 less men available for the attack. During all this, Confederate commanders Longstreet and A.P. Hill had arranged their 20,000 men in a position to wait for the start of the battle by Huger. At 2.30 in the afternoon, Longstreet heard artillery in the distance and thought it was Huger's attack, so he ordered his artillery to open fire as well. This lack of coordination on the Confederate side resulted in a piecemeal assault of the Union position at 4 p.m. While Longstreet and Hill attacked, none of the other Confederate commanders engaged the Union and they left Longstreet and Hill to themselves. However, even with the lack of coordination or support, Longstreet and Hill did have some success. The Union did have 40,000 men in the area, about double what Longstreet and Hill had, but because of no overall command, there were breaks in their defenses that the Confederates could slip through. The Union line broke during the fight and pulled back. The fighting came to a standstill eventually, though, as the Confederates had attacked the center of the Union line, which meant Union reinforcements could easily reach any breaks and steal the gap. Because of this, by 9 p.m. the battle was over and it was clear that Lee was not going to destroy the Union army that day. The total casualties for the Union were 3,797, with 297 killed, 1,696 wounded, and 1,804 missing or captured. Meanwhile, the Confederates lost 3,673 soldiers, including 638 killed, 2,814 wounded, and 221 missing. Thanks for listening, and please join us again next time on Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition.